So as anyone who watches this channel on the regs will know, I really like learning stuff and sharing what I've learned with other people. And of all the things I like learning about, there is nothing that I personally find more enjoyable than learning about the lives of famous people. I like learning about famous people for two reasons. One, learning about famous people is an easy way to learn about everything, since it is very difficult to learn about historically famous people without also learning a lot about history. And two, famous people tend to have really exciting lives, which makes them a lot of fun to study. A while ago I made a website called Americans That Matter that was my attempt to study and write condensed biographies of various historically important American men and women. I tended to focus on people who I actually personally didn't know a lot about but understood to be very historically important. Last week I finished five new biographies of five fairly randomly famous Americans. Let me tell you about them. The first one is Marilyn Monroe who is obviously one of the most famous movie stars of all time but I personally did didn't really know that much about her because I am a man and I think men have traditionally not been that interested in her life. The big thing about her life is how tragic it was. So Marilyn Monroe had a very abusive and painful childhood and it didn't seem like she was really on track to have a very happy future. But she was very beautiful and she got noticed by a modeling talent scout one day and through her success in modeling she went on to become an actress. And she was actually one of Hollywood's biggest stars for a brief period of time, appearing in a number of very successful movies along alongside a number of other very big actors. But her problem was she never felt like she was being taken seriously. She was always expected to play the role of the ditzy blonde, which was kind of offensive to her because she wasn't a ditzy blonde. She was actually quite a conscientious and intelligent young woman. She loved to read and really wanted to make up for the fact that she never had much of a formal education, which is part of the reason why she married the playwright Arthur Miller. She really wanted to hang with the intellectual crowd. But in the end, Hollywood life was just too depressing for her and she took a lot of drugs, including the sleeping pills that wound up killing her in 1962 when she was 36 years old. What was surprising for me to learn about Marilyn Monroe is that she is actually considered quite a substantial person these days. A lot of feminist academics in particular take her very seriously as a very useful case study of what it was like to be a woman in Hollywood in the 1950s. And yes, she did sleep with JFK. Shifting gears entirely, the second person I looked at was Blackbeard the Pirate. I had of course heard of Blackbeard before because he is basically the most cliche pirate in the whole world. But when you actually sit down to study him, you quickly learn that he is one of those historical figures where the myth greatly exceeds the reality. Blackbeard didn't have a particularly long or horrifying reign of terror, for instance. His main accomplishment was simply robbing a bunch of merchant ships off the coast of New England between 1715 and 1718, or about five years in all. His most infamous act was blockading the port of South Carolina, which was this tremendously economically disruptive thing that led to the governor of Virginia basically dispatching an assassination crew to kill him. But the big thing about Blackbeard is that he was very savvy at PR. Even though he wasn't actually the most murderous evil man who ever lived, he really wanted people to think that he was. So he dressed in this very over-the-top scary way and would act scary when he met people and encouraged the spreading of scary rumors about himself. He'd probably be quite happy that all this myth-making worked so well and they were still making him a villain in movies 300 years later. The other thing is that even though Blackbeard became such a headache for the British colonial rulers of America, he was also sort of a problem that the British made for themselves. A lot of historians think that Blackbeard probably got his start working as what they call a British privateer, which was basically when a government would hire some dodgy guy to harass and plunder the ships of their enemies. So when the British were fighting with the Spanish for control of the Caribbean, Blackbeard would engage in the sort of tactics against the Spanish that he would eventually proceed to use against the British when the war ended. So the lesson is, always be careful about who you are paying off for short-term gain. Number three is Frank Lloyd Wright, who is well known for being the most famous architect of all time. I've never really known very much about architecture, although I did know that Frank Lloyd Wright, in addition to being a great builder, was pretty infamous for being a giant snob. Frank Lloyd Wright actually has a pretty simple biography in some respects, because he knew he wanted to become an architect ever since he was a child and started working full-time basically as soon as he was able. He even dropped out of architecture school just so he could start working sooner. Now one thing that I noticed that comes up a lot when you study the biographies of famous Americans is how 
often they viewed their work as being in opposition to some sort of popular European or British trend. So Frank Lloyd Wright really hated European architecture, particularly Victorian architecture. He saw it as being really fussy and ornate and fancy for no real reason. He thought it was basically how bad architects impressed stupid people. Frank Lloyd Wright was a bit of a jerk. Frank Lloyd Wright made buildings with really clean, elegant designs. You know, lots of geometric shapes and straight angles and exposed wood and brick and stone instead of plaster and wallpaper. Nice big windows with lots of natural light, that kind of thing. A lot of it is the stuff that we just kind of take for granted as classy architecture today. He also had this big thing about having architecture exist more harmoniously with nature, which again was a big rejection of the previous theory, which was to just demolish nature and build wherever. His most famous building ever, Falling Water, which is this private home in Pennsylvania, is a good example of a building that looks very comfortable in its natural surrounding. Frank Lloyd Wright made over 750 buildings in his lifetime, and if you are an American, there is a very good chance that your state has at least one. Let me know in the comments if you've ever actually seen one. I'd be interested to know. Now, the other big thing about Frank Lloyd Wright is that he was this huge tabloid figure. He was always getting married and then cheating on his wives and having these big, long, messy divorces. One of his mistresses was even killed in this really horrifying axe murder. Frank Lloyd Wright himself had nothing to do with it, but the newspapers still went bananas about it because it involved Frank Lloyd Wright and he was always headline gold. Number four is the rapper Tupac. Now, I have never been that big into rap, but I do remember Tupac as being very popular when I was young. That one song of his, California, was on the radio all the time. Tupac was a bit like Marilyn Monroe in a lot of ways, in that he had a very short and tragic life, but I also think that he was a lot less sympathetic. So Tupac was a poor black kid who grew up in the ghettos of Baltimore, though he also had a lot of exposure at a young age to a lot of interesting people, because his mother had been this high-profile black radical in the 1960s. He was always interested in music and art and poetry, and moved to California as a young man to become a big star, which he did pretty quickly. Tupac became the most famous gangster rapper of the 1990s because he was so much smarter than the others. He liked to study poetry and philosophy and thus wrote better songs with more insightful lyrics. His big thing was standing up for the thug life, which is the life of poor black men in the American inner cities. This was the life that Tupac himself had lived and he really wanted people to understand the economic and cultural and social conditions that made the ghetto the way it was. In fact, by the standards of today's music, I would say Tupac was practically the New York Times editorial page. But Tupac also continued to live a pretty thuggish life himself even after he became rich and famous. In addition to frequently getting shot, shooting people, and picking fights with other rappers, in 1995 he was found guilty for being involved in a gang rape of a young fan. He went to prison for eight months before getting out on appeal. The guy who financed that appeal was this dude, Suge Knight, who was Tupac's last manager. He was a really shady guy with a lot of gang connections. Basically, it was no great surprise when Tupac eventually got gunned down in a drive-by shooting. And lastly, number five is Charles Taze Russell. Now, you probably haven't heard of this guy, but I bet you have heard of the religious movement he founded, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Charles Taze Russell was basically this rich guy who liked to study the Bible, and he was really into these theories of Adventism and Millennialism and... Eschatology, which is basically the idea that if you read the Bible close enough, you can figure out when the world is going to end and what it's going to be like. And Charles Taze Russell eventually came up with his own conclusion. He said that in 1914, the world was going to end and all of the good Christians would live for a thousand years in a new world led by Jesus. And everything would be super great there, especially for the 144,000 super devout Christians who Jesus would pick to help him rule this cool new universe. This also Awesome New World was different than Heaven, by the way. Heaven came a thousand years after. Russell was also big on this idea that because the next world would be so awesome, the current world was really evil and bad and corrupted by Satan. Government, business, mainstream religion, they were all evil and you should have nothing to do with them. A lot of people really went for this, and Russell, who was very charismatic, became one of the most popular preachers of the 19th century, touring all over the world. The people liked him so much they didn't even mind when the world didn't actually end in 1914. And when he died, they formed a new Christian denomination around his theories. They're called the Jehovah's Witnesses because one of Russell's many eccentric opinions was that God should be called Jehovah because that was his name in certain parts of the Old Testament. Russell was kind of a boring guy on the personal level, and the most interesting thing about him was probably his troubled marriage. He had this really messy divorce that was quite scandalous for its time. There were a lot of reasons why he and Mrs. Russell didn't get along, but I'm sure one of the big ones was the fact that he was such a hardliner, he believed it was sinful to even have sex with your own wife. So anyway, those are the five Americans I've been studying lately. If you're like me and didn't really know
know that much about them. Hopefully you know a little bit more now. If you'd like to learn about them in more detail, I will post a link to my website where I have the full biographies I wrote. What five famous Americans do you think I should profile next? When you answer, try to be like me and think of people that you know are important, but you personally don't know that much about. After all, I think the most satisfying form of learning begins with admitting your own lack of knowledge. Oh yes, and one last thing, if you haven't already, could I please ask you to follow me on Instagram? I've been getting a lot of new Instagram followers lately, which is a lot of fun for me, because I must honestly say Instagram is by far my favorite social media. It's a good place to just sort of be silly and fun, and I really like it. So if you could just give me a follow, it would be much appreciated. All right, see you next week.